Welcome everybody to the February, uh, January 19th PAB board meeting. Start with introduction. I'm Larry Knox, chair of the Police Accountability Board. I'm Ricky Harvey, mayoral appointee. I'm Danielle Tucker. I am the Alliance seat. Arlene Brown, vice chair, Alliance appointment. And thank you all so much for coming and joining us. Good evening. I'm Daniel Cadet Sr. and I sit on the I'm Matthew Nikoloff, uh, he, him pronouns, and I am a council appointee. Jerry Walker Coart, interim executive director. All right, thank you. Uh, minutes. So Maria did email the minutes out to everybody earlier in the week. Anybody have any additions or changes to the minutes? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the minutes. I so move. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Um, and Next on our agenda is our staff report. Um, yeah, so a few things. And for me, it's a little bit of focus on the uh, work that the employees are doing. Doing one of the things that um, that, I, that we have a shift in is the monthly report that the case management team puts together. And when I originally looked at it, there were some numbers, but I wasn't sure about what those numbers were. So um, between the um, case management director and the investigations director, based on all the great work and the input that the, that the case managers do, it's a more comprehensive report. So I'm feeling really good about that. So then when we look at it, we can analyze it a lot more. So that feels like a big deal to me. I'm taking that as a win. So those two teams um, doing that great work there. And so when we look at numbers, they more closely align the case management numbers, certainly with the investigative numbers. So in the monthly reports, that um, is showing up. And, and again, it was this is uh, November and December. So we're going to be using this going forward and even maybe tweaking it and improving it. Um, so there's that piece. The other is um, we met, there was a presentation to the safety committee of uh, city council and they asked um, a few questions. The intention of that meeting was to ask for a continuation of the contract for cause wave um, <clears throat> to continue our, our community outreach and um, information sessions uh, to spend down about $80,000 that we still have left till June. And so um, that went, so we had our, we had the staff people presenting that and also providing updates on the training. Uh, each of the staff who went up, the, there were different council members who asked questions always about the investigations or are the numbers and so, we provided information um, about, about that and why we weren't doing hearings. So we're continue, continuing to look at that process and really um, focusing on getting clarity on whether we can do any kind of hearing or no kind of hearing. Um, but at this point, we're putting cases together. The, the investigative team is putting cases together that we, we plan to move forward and uh, have to the boards, at least for some review, we have to, I'm still trying to see if that's gonna be acceptable or not, that at least you can review and make some recommendations for us so we can continue to move cases beyond the investigative stage and also find out if there's other barriers to us getting information that may slow things down. So I'm working on trying to figure that out as well. Um, the other is that you'll have some cases to look at um, that will be recommended for closing. And so um, we're asking that you look at SharePoint and get up on the cases so that you'll be ready for that for the February 2nd meeting. And, oh, and I attended the, um, the Alliance meeting last night, the Zoom meeting last night. Lots of, lots of really great questions. Um, the last hour. So um, hopefully I was able to answer the questions and look for them at that point. And certainly I offered to come back. So that was helpful. 
Anything else? Any questions? A couple. Um, mm -hmm. So for the, the reports, does that mean what we, we're going to be reporting publicly on the website? Will that format change? Will that be different? For our... Then I have to find out because I, the reports that I get, I'm not exactly sure. I went on the website. I don't know, but that's what I, my understanding was, but I'll get that information to you so that when we look at numbers, they more closely align. So it makes more sense to people when you look at it. And so we can look at the status of all the cases based on the information that's in the system. And for the questions that council has, uh, I know we sent we sent responses over on the week. Have you got any feedback yet? Are they not yet? Engaged in no, I have not heard back. I don't know. Did everybody get a copy? I only sent yeah, it I to see two. Okay. And the cases that we could potentially close are in SharePoint right now. Yes, so that's, that's my understanding. Okay. That's my understanding. Again, I'm still learning SharePoint. Yeah, so yeah. that's my understanding is for you to look. And, and and you should be getting notifications when they're there. So, okay. So if you are, that's great. If you're not, then yeah. Right. So who has and who I'm has? I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think I'm agreeing with that we should. Oh. I wouldn't say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. I, don't think got I mean, I know the link to check, but I haven't got anything being, I haven't got an email saying you have something in there. Yeah, so I, I have to find out what that notification is, like it's an auto automatic thing or not, but um, so I will follow up on that. From my experience, I've never known SharePoint to give a notification okay. when something is put into SharePoint. It's very similar to like a Google Drive, so I don't really... Um, I've never known an automatic ping or something. Yeah, no, no, no. This is more so like when you do add something to the SharePoint, you would have, unless you attach everyone's um, oh, email okay. to the document that you're putting in, then it will send it as an email. Okay. But when you click on it, it will direct you to SharePoint, but it won't necessarily say, hey, something has been added to SharePoint if you haven't um, attached their personal email. So the person's getting it, maybe this is the one who the main person or something like yeah. that and thinking everybody else gets yeah you probably oh, okay. upload in the document everyone okay. has access to it but okay. you may not have um tagged them in or attached them to that specific document as viewers they don't have to be editors yeah. they could just be like viewers of these documents of like i submitted this into the sharepoint i just want you to view it you don't okay. have editing powers okay okay so I'll clarify that process because we want to definitely let you know um, to look into this. So I'm telling you now, so please, please, please if I <laughs> look in it now and then I'm, I'll work on a process that makes sense for you and just check in with you about what makes sense for you to get that information. People who are much smarter than me in IT, I'll check with them. We get to hear there's things in there for us to review and mm -hmm. getting more yeah. next week or next month. Yeah. Um, and of course, I'm sorry, you, you had a presentation, those who were able to attend from the policy team and just really, really good information, great presentation, just incredible work that they're doing as well. Um, and so there's work being done and it, it really is good. It's good work. So I know you'll hear more about that next week from the policy team as they continue to try to provide that information and we'll and we'll work through what the steps are for moving beyond just presentation and, and go from there. I don't know if you know the details. I know there's another court hearing set up or coming on the calendar for uh, discipline, disciplinary power. Yeah. Um, do you have details about that or just? Not, no, other than the date, and then it still may take until the spring before something is done, but I don't have any more details on that. I can check. I can check and see if there's any more. But that's that's what I was told last week that it probably will go into the spring and perhaps summer. But if you want specific, I think there's a. You said there's a date set. You have the date. I don't remember the date. No. Yeah. I so I think there hearing, is some a, kind of hearing date that's yeah. set now. But I'll 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 look into that. So you mentioned eighty thousand dollars that it sounds like needs to be spent. By June, would you say a little more about that? Yeah, it's a cause wave is a contract. Cause wave, I think, used to be the ad council, right? So it's about the impact impacting the community. That's what their their thrust is now for the past couple of years. 
and um, they're being who? Causeway. Okay. And so we have a contract through them to, to get the information out. So the communications unit is um, working on doing that, whatever that means. We, we're, we've got to be clear on what that spending looks like to spend that money down information sessions, billboards, whatever it is. So we have to spend that money down to get the information out for the community to be involved um, and, and know what's going on. So is that one of those use it or lose it type? It's done. Yeah. They don't want to carry it over. Yeah. So that'll okay. be, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Piggybacking, piggybacking on the meeting with the Alliance, they were very pleased to hear that work is being done. And they also mentioned the fact that they had, uh, Mike Higgins had done a presentation. They were interested in whether any of their suggestions had been incorporated. So I know that when you get back to them, let us know also um, about that. And they were also very interested in staff morale and how things are going with uh, team members because everybody's on the same team and you were going to start with one-on-ones and I was wondering how that is going. Uh, you're inviting everybody in by themselves. How does that work? Yeah, I've, I've let the employees know. I hope they, they, they knew um, that if they want a one-on-one -on -one with me, some of them have scheduled that. They can, but I'm not going to schedule it for everybody they can reach out to me. Everybody doesn't want to talk to me. They don't need to talk to me, but if they want to, they certainly can do that and they can schedule that with me. Um, I've had one-on-ones with the supervisory team. Um, and so that's been helpful. And of course, we'll continue to do that. Uh, the feedback they talked about was input on the, on the disciplinary matrix. Yeah. Yeah, so the team is looking at that now and, um, I'll certainly check in to see if they have any information that they're that's separate from what they got in terms of community input from the Alliance and see what that is. But they're working on that now, um, working to bring some degree of closure to the, the matrix with the, the input from the community. They're analyzing that and putting that together. So. Without giving away any secrets for your one-on-one, -on -one, have people come with suggestions as to how to help us move forward and make things better for our working for the community? Because we're totally community focused. Yes, um, uh, well, I'll say that I'm not sure what you mean, totally community focused. Well, our, our, everything that we do is to uh, work with and for the community. That's what the agency is for, so that police accountability will help reimagine safety for everyone in the community. So that's why I said everything that we're doing is for the community. And uh, I was wondering if, as during your one-on-ones, if anybody had brought any suggestions, ideas, no, because I know it's not yeah, of course they do. Yeah, so I'm I love hearing that. You know, we talk about things that have um, gotten in the way in the past and how to move forward from that. And so my focus certainly is is community, but my focus is also the employees. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm that's why I'm saying for me it's more than community, and the and the, the employees are part of that. So yes, I get suggestions from them. And ideas, so um, it, it, yeah, it's a lot of information that I'm still taking. It's only been here a couple of weeks. Nobody's expecting miracles, but I'm glad they're here for sharing information and ideas so that things will run smooth. Thank you. Is it appropriate of the question I'm about to ask if it's not in this setting, just say it's not? But can you tell us how your couple of weeks with the staff, senior staff, and uh, senior staff and that. core staff, how has how have your two weeks been? Has it been a good? Well, have you been received well? How how is that? If we can 
talk about that now. This is not the time then. Uh, I guess you'd have to ask them of how I've been received. Um, but um, I, I get a lot of information. So I've been filtering through information. There's lots of emails. There's lots of information with attachments. I, I, I sometimes get a chance to take a break and go and sit with them like I did today and just watch um, um, one of the analysts look at uh, some of the work that they were doing. But um, it's been intense. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure how to measure whether how I'm being received or not. I guess you'd have to ask them. So you're um, feeling good. I'm feeling very good. I'm feeling very hopeful. Yeah, I think yeah. we have great people. I think we have we have we're doing good work. Of course, there's work to be done. I mean, I'm coming in the middle of some some major changes for them. Like people have been through a lot, um, but I'm 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 hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Um, all right, so on to uh, next. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, next on the agenda is the chair's report, my report. Uh, I'll follow up on something that I talked about at the last meeting. Uh, you know, the council legislation that was proposed in December. Uh, I said a lot at the last meeting, so same thing that I said last week. You can, the last meeting, you know, those were in the minutes and we can watch the video. Uh, you know, we've had conversations with council since then about collaborating and, and maybe making some changes. Definitely in the process of when they propose legislation having to do with us. Um, we should definitely have a chance as a board to talk about it and then talk to the, you know, our executive director and the staff about proposed changes having to do with PAB. Even council feels they are minor or, 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 or not anything that's legislation that passes that should be conversation with subject matter experts like the people at that agency. I think other parts of city government, the legislation affecting that part of city government um, or affiliation with city government, there's always a conversation had in advance and we would expect the same here even more so because of the you know heightened public focus of our work. So that's been you know expressed with council um, and there was agreement that the process would change in the future. And then over the next few weeks and working with, with Sherry and the board, we're gonna figure out a better process for that um, going forward when there's you know legislation coming through. But I understand there won't be anything new at this month's council meeting regards to PAB legislation. So the things that, you know, other pr proposals or things that were tabled aren't coming up again. So it could be a better public uh, community conversation. So I encourage anybody who's, you know, listening or, or wants to, you know, talk to council about those uh, things out in the community. You know, there is there's going to be a process for that or, 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 or even, you know, before they announce the process, letting your council member know. And we've been talking with our, our staff here, especially our, um, our council's office at the PAB about the what the actual effects are of the legislation and things that could be amended or changed or clarified. Um, I think you know we have one view and others in the community have one view what the legislation has implied or said and then council members have another view on it. If there had been a conversation in advance that could have been cleared up or we could have had a clearer you know back and forth over what we disagreed on. Um, but right now you know not having that in advance I think did a disservice so I think, I think I'm confident that will change and right now we're going to figure out what we can do to you know, what comes up next out of council in regards to what was passed, you know, have some impact on that and get something a little more clear and better for the community out uh, in regards to the legislation that already passed and, and then proposed legislation that was tabled. Um, in regards to uh, the organizing that's going on, um, you know, there is when the union, uh, when the uh, Workers United uh, uh, and the staff that announced that they were organizing with them, uh, announced their, in October, their plans to form a union. Everybody in the board, you know, voted in favor. I came out in favor of it. I, union members, so obviously, it's a pretty easy decision for me, but I'm glad the rest of the board came out in, 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 in support of that. Um, we're also a decision maker on, on the approval of that. That goes, obviously, the city government. And right now, there's uh, a conflict, as we've talked about before, in city government between who is the appropriate body to recognize the union. Is it going to be the mayor, uh, the administration, or the city council? Um, we feel as, you know, as a board, I know that it should just be recognized and maybe they both to do it, you know, or, or figure out that process quicker than it has right been right now. Because it was in October, we're in January right now, and the union still hasn't been recognized. There's another process they can go through, which they're going through, with having to have an election, and then, you know, 
that costs money and time where it's obvious i think that you know as when other parts of the city government have organized and new employees are brought in you know to a department they just kind of recognize you know especially um, with, the, with the support that the mayor and city council have said they had for the union um so you know what when we've heard that you know the city council did send a letter um to the board about uh some progress they're making in getting a new council to do the work of um, dealing with the union election and recognition and recognition i think that's a good step um but again there's going to be time to find that person time getting them hired getting them you know engaged in the issue and then you know finally uh, making decisions and if the union was just recognized that could all be short-circuited and then you know that council can do the work of you know being part of the negotiations as opposed to the decision making of if there's going to be a union or not so again that we don't have the power to make that happen but again we're kind of reiterating to council and the mayor that you know if there's another way besides having to go through an election which takes longer just recognizing the union i think that would be best but um this process of this hiring that they that they plan on doing and and moving their process on a little bit quicker with decision making i think is a good step i think there's quicker steps they could do also um, any questions about those people? Yes, if they're telling you about hiring someone to process, figure out the union process or help with the union process. Yeah, a, new, a new legal counsel, there's the, the person who did the legal, uh, one of the people in the law department that did that work retired. So they're, and the process of filling that position may take a while. So council is doing an emergency, uh, um, uh, it's kind of expedite hiring somebody outside council to specifically do that work. You know, trying to hire somebody like this month, I think, and then having them start sooner than going through that process of getting somebody else to, to fill that particular city position. Oh, okay. And that's coming out of council's budget, yeah. not out of yeah. Okay. And then again, these are things we just rest directly to council also. Um, and in regards, and this is, you know, uh, ever since I joined the board, has been uh, a plea, and even more so, I think we're here later tonight. Um, filling the you know the board seats um, as we have openings, uh, the seat that's an alliance seat for Shawnee has been open since is that June or July? I think it was June when she resigned from the board. Um, way 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 past the deadline that's in our charter in regards to the time for filling that. I know council's working on a new process of trying to speed that up, but again, you know the charter is pretty clear and positions being filled. And as we have other openings, uh, those need to be filled within the timeline of the charter so people have complete recognition that they're being represented on this board. Um, the alliance had seats, you know, city council has appointed seats. Um, and I remind everybody I got appointed pretty quickly and I was a city council seat, and other seats were, were, were left languishing. Um, and and uh, Daniel's, Daniel's seat took a while to fill. We got him here, but it wasn't within the time frame. And uh, uh, the seat from our former chair is way beyond the time frame. And, 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 I think we'll see the importance and a little bit of the importance of filling those seats quickly uh, so we can do the work because it's a lot of work and also as we can bring new people on the board one of the things that got passed by city council was training which we're already working on we reported last week our last meeting about that but if we are bringing on board members and there's training they have to do to be able to hear the cases and do the work of the agency if there is delays in bringing them on if there is people coming on openings that are, are being filled at different times although the openings are happening at the same time that brings those that brings board members on at, at a disadvantage and not able to do the work as well because they're doing catch up um, or they're not learning. They don't have somebody coming onto the board at the same time to get oriented with or to do the training with. So it's putting us at a disadvantage of, of, of that work happening. So again, um, we've already talked to council about this, but again, getting those board seats filled in, in the community, reminding them of, of getting those board seats filled um, quickly as when, if and when we have openings. I think there's a great deal of irony and the amount of so-called public outcry for us to start hearing cases right away. But when we're asking people to follow the law and give us the tools to not only hear cases right away, but to do it thoroughly well and in accordance with representation from the people, especially from the Alliance, that suddenly they ask for more time and tell us it can't be done. And I think that uh, people should be way more upset about this than they are. And you shouldn't be writing articles about the PAB dragging its feet. Should we call out council members who promise to do that and are refusing to not only follow the law, but follow the will of their constituents to have this happen? So I just, we can keep who's saying this. Who's next? Is it a board member for us? Uh, right at the one opening right now is an alliance opening. They've given names to council and I know there's been interviews. They have the names. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, and they're, we're going to have 
There's more to come in a little bit and we'll get in new business about that. But um, they have the power to get what they want by giving us what we need. And they're refusing to get what they want because they're not willing to give us what we need. It's not on us. It's on them to follow the law. Right. So I think that, uh, again, the public doesn't hear that loud and clear every single meeting. You can do this whataboutism thing like you've seen on Fox News for the last 10, 15 years. Oh, they didn't do it either. The reality is, if you say you're going to do something, do it. And our staff and our board is working their butt off to do exactly what we need to do so that we can not only hear cases, but do them well and do them competently and do them like the people of the city deserve. And it's time that there's leadership from the actual leaders that the people of the city deserve as well. So it's a bit, it's so, a bit tiring. So who needs to have a conversation with that leadership so that we don't have public findings anymore. Yeah, no I mean, public problem. I'd like for us not to have, uh, as we come into 2023, I'd like for us to work hard uh, by all means necessary, which means if it's you, brother chair, if it's you, sister co-chair, uh, if it's you and our ED, to have some conversations. Maybe you've had these conversations. I know you have, but uh, sometimes we got to talk and talk and talk. Uh, man, I don't want. I don't. I don't want us to fight if we can meander a route to get what we need without fighting. And I understand we've been after this for a while. It's a new year, and maybe we can find a way to approach it. I mean, what is it? Uh, yeah, skip ahead to, uh, I want to I want to more fully answer your question with, I think, skipping to the next thing, which is new business. Okay. Just kind of highlight what we're talking about a bit. Um, okay. But there has been direct conversations. I've been told that they are working on that, pro on that process to get it done quicker. But um, George, Nat, Dave, our Rabbi Seto, our, our, our uh, committee member, uh, our board member who the new training committee report wasn't able to make the meeting tonight. So we're in um, put a hold on on committee reports, but um, for new business, uh, we have anybody have any new business they want to discuss? Yeah. All right, Matthew. Well, um, it's come to a really good time in the time of the agency where we have an interim executive director. We have staff working hard and doing great work. We have a really great board in place, and it's come time in my life with everything going on outside of this to step down after three years um, and make space for some new folks to come in. So I'm, I've, I've sent my letter of resignation to the city council um, and it's effective tonight. So after tonight's whatever time, I don't, I don't remember what time we found, I will no longer be serving as a board member of the police accountability board. Um, I will say it has nothing to do with the agency. I'm actually excited because I think the agency is in the strongest place it's ever been. I think we have great leadership great colleagues and our staff are doing phenomenal work. So I think we're in a great place to keep moving forward. I think this is also an excellent, an excellent opportunity for city council to appoint a cohort of um, new board members so that they can not only be fully trained so they're not playing catch up later on, but also to empower this agency to do the work that they're demanding us to do. So I would, I, I, I'm not only recommending, I, I'm strongly urging city council to appoint both seats as rapidly as possible so that the staff staff's work can take fruit in terms of the board being ready to serve to hear the cases that um, the cities who desperately wants them to hear. So I think that um, I think that that as, as Larry said, I think there's it's a no-brainer if you don't know who wants to approve the union, approve the union both of you because the workers here deserve it and they need it for their well-being and for them to do their most effective work. It's there's no question here. You just have to say yes to the union and support the staff. They're doing lots of great work. And it's insulting to the staff to have people calling into question the work of this agency in public because of politicians not doing their side of the deal. So I think that that needs to happen. And, and as you said, you won't have any more of this in 2023 for me. So I'm going to get it out now. Um, <laughs> maybe and not on the board and not in the board meetings anyway. Yeah, right. No, right. no, but you know, that's true. So I think, you know, the council council support has supported us. Yes. Over the last three years and council also has not supported us the way that council I think thinks that they have. And so I think this is time for some leadership from council to stop being on the side of Pharaoh and asking the workers to make more bricks with half the amount of materials and instead 
to be like Moses and stand up with your privilege and help work for liberation to Pharaoh. So it's time to stop hobbling the work of this union. It's a moral issue. Uh, the people of this city want to see a police force that is reformed, that is safe for every community member, uh, that wields tremendous amount of violent force and yet has almost no accountability for the violence when it's enacted, particularly against the most vulnerable. So I don't pull my Christian card very often, but as a minister, I know there's some Christian folks in government, there's some Christian folks out in the community uh, who could do more to advocate for this. You have a duty to stand with those who are being most affected by violence, to stand up to power when it is idolatrous and to work against the seeds of fascism and against white supremacy. And right now, there's a lot of Christians who aren't doing that. Um, and so if you're a Christian police officer, a Christian politician, a Christian pastor, anybody out there, and you're waiting to see what happens before you throw your hat in, um, I would urge you to read the first chapter of Revelation about what happens to lukewarm folks and to start getting involved on behalf of the people of the city. Uh, it's not just a recommendation. It's for all you Bible thumpers out there. It's, it's fairly biblical and fairly plain in the sense of scripture. I do want to thank my um, community, the Southwedge Mission, who for three years has given me extra, let, allowed me to use my work hours on this, uh, on this endeavor um, over and over again. Uh, it's a small community that's given a lot to make sure that this agency can exist and has offered a lot of support to folks over the years. So the South Admission um, has helped make this agency possible. And I'm really thankful for my people being willing to not just talk about standing up for justice, but also putting their resources on the line for that. Um, finally, I just wanna say thanks to the board um, for the three years. It's been really an honor to work with all y'all. Um, I'm, I'm sad. The only thing that makes me, it makes it hard to leave is just, I really enjoy even Dr. Harvey, I really enjoy that, especially Dr. Harvey. Um, but you know, I think you really are in great hands. So I think, you know, it's a great time to move forward with the new era. The kind of old time is done. We've closed the chapter on that. Um, and, you know, I think it's time to move forward. So I, you know, thanks to my family, to my church, to Shawnee and Dora and everyone who's been there from the start, Dr. Dr. Harvey, Dr. Bob's not here, so I can't fight with him all that time. Um, but yeah, it's been a wild journey. And certainly I think this is this is the agency that's going to get done. There's no there's no other try that you can like kind of wait for a good, better chance to come along, right? It's time to commit and to just say this is your chance. This is a great agency. It's a great it's a great group of folks to put your uh, to put your resources and your actions behind. And it's time to start recognizing that um, because whatever happened to Wilmer Hale or the Race Commission over three years, we've seen lots of people come forth with great ideas that seem to like you know make a great political resume or to get you reelected, but we're still here. And three years ago, there was nothing, and now there's something here. And it's doing exactly what it was called to do. And we're asking the city and the people of Rochester to keep helping to do it. So, I, again, fill these, fill these board seats now so they can get trained, so they can do the thing you're asking us to do. And I think the city's going to be extremely happy and even really um, amazed at how, what kind of good work that's happening here. So, thanks. Every new business. Yeah. Um, first, I want to say thank you for all your work that you that you've done for the community, Reverend Nikolov. It has been an absolute honor to serve with you here on the board. And with deep regrets, I am also um, here to announce my resignation. Um, my other commitments have become far too great for me to be able to fulfill the requirements of my position on the board. And I feel like it's best for me to make room for someone with the time and energy to devote to the job. It has been an absolute pleasure to serve on this board. It's been two and a half years and I've enjoyed every bit of it. From the moment of my interview with the, P with the city, with city council for the position, I just remember in the interview, they telling me, this is a board that is starting up. This is the early stages. It will be a lot of work. It will be hard work. You no know, systems are created. You are going to be a pivotal part of creating these systems. And I took it with a grain of salt and I really stood true to that, stood true to that. So throughout the times where it was tough, throughout the times we had extra long meetings mm -hmm. and things were happening, even with the staff, when they came along, I knew from the very beginning that it wasn't going to be something that was easy because we have never seen anything like the police accountability board in the city of Rochester. So I would be a fool to think that this would be the first time we would see such a board and everything will go smoothly. I knew that it was going to come with bumps and I just took it and I learned throughout the process. 
and I appreciated every bit of it. I don't have anything negative to say about my time on the board. The leaders that came before me, um, Shawnee Wilson, I appreciated her leadership. She taught me a lot through her leadership. Even Connor DeReynolds, um, I appreciated his leadership. He taught me a lot through his leadership. Uh, Dr. McIntosh, she taught me a lot. Every other board member, uh, board member Perez, she contributed a lot. Um, it was just an honor. It was my time on this board. I really seen my life come full circle. Um, doc, uh, board member Perez, she was actually my Head Start teacher. So when I got on, <laughs> literally my Head Start teacher at ABC Head Start. So when I got on the board, she came in, she was like, hey, you were my student and showed me a picture of me when I was five. So when I say my life came full circle within the board, it really did. And I appreciated every single part of it. So I'm just really at a time in my life where I'm transitioning. I'm doing so much right now. And um, I'm still contributing to the community. I'm still doing my due diligence and I'm trying my best. Um, so you guys send some positivity my way. But I just really wanted to uh, thank the city of Rochester, the community, PAB, the staff for all the work that you guys are doing city council because the same way we're going through changes this is new for them as well <laughs> the same way this is a new board for us it's new to them they've been you know they've been calling the shots so with us coming into town it's just kind of like how do we work this all in and i just appreciate all of the learning curves and everything so i just really want to say thank you to everyone um Chair Knox, you've been doing an awesome job since you came on, came on the board. Uh, when you came on, you hit the ground running. Like you didn't take a minute. Your first day, you were just in meetings and you hit the ground running. Really appreciate all the work that you're doing. Uh, board Member Brown, I love you. <laughs> you know, this is my girl. She's, you know, she speaks her mind. She's fair. She, uh, she definitely has the, just the heart to do the work. Um, don't even want the recognition. Sometimes she has the heart to do the work and we just appreciate you. We really do appreciate you. Dr. Harvey, you, you're great in everything you do. I really appreciate you um, and everything you do. Once again, you're fair. You always letting us know, let's try to go about this a copacetic way. You know, let's be optimistic. Let's see if we can, you know, talk this out. And I just really appreciate every single one of you guys. Rabbi Seto, Dr. Harrison, <laughs> I just, you know, his wittiness, he just has a lot to offer. I appreciate every single person. Daniel, didn't forget you since your time being on the board. I appreciate you as well and everything you have to offer. Just as I transition to other roles, I just ask that you guys just support me, send some positivity my way and anything that I can help the board with or the community with, I will. And um, I'm pretty sure you'll see me again. I'm pretty sure this next step that I'm in, I'm in it to elevate myself. So who knows which way I could come back to help the PAB. You just really never know. But I do want to just honestly thank everybody for my time on the board. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, I've just learned so much. And I just have one request. Um, with two individuals resigning tonight, my resignation will not take place until January 31st. So I still have a couple more weeks here or yeah, a couple more, like a week and a half left on the board. I just asked city council to fill the seat as quickly as possible, just so the board could be at full power and just have its full effect. Um, that's what's needed. That's what's needed for the community. The staff would like it. If we're gonna be doing work on the community's behalf, we need to be at the full force. So just please fulfill the seats as quickly as possible. And we'll continue to do the work in any way that I can assist. I definitely will. Thank you for coming on the board. The reason that I'm resigning at this time, my board members already know, is that I waited to actually have someone in place that I was confident with. They can all tell you, <laughs> we've talked about this. Literally, I've talked about it with the PABA um, liaison. I was like, I wanted to wait till somebody came in that I was confident that can lead the organization before I stepped away. So that's why I made sure I made it to the meetings where you spoke with us. I was like, I want to make sure I make it to the meetings with this, with this woman. I, I hear great things with her. 
Um, I talked to one of my professors over the weekend. She spoke highly of you too. <laughs> um, and I was like, I want to make it to a medium with um, Walker, uh, Sherry Card Walker, because I really want to uh, see what she's about, just ask some questions. So that's really why I waited for my resignation because I just wanted to make sure the board was in great hands. So I'm comfortable and I'm confident where the board is, also with the staff. And um, I think we're in really good hands. So I'm sorry if that went a little long, but I just want to thank you guys um, for all your work and send some positivity my way, please. And thank you. <laughs> What we were talking about earlier was filling the seats. Now there's obviously more of a need. I mean, um, we have three openings, two right now, three really as of the end of the month. You know, there's a nine person board, that's a third of the board. Uh, as we get closer to hearing cases, as we try to share this workload, as we bring in extra people on the board that have connections that can help the work inside the agency and outside uh, in the community, uh, we, you know, this is all part time for us and we're not paid for it, you know, and, and that's we, what we agreed to. We also agreed to not join a board with two or three people. You know, we we agreed to join a board that had nine people that would all be very much engaged in this work. And and as of uh, the end of the month, we're going to have uh, six, and that's not going to be enough. Even as we get to the work of the panels, there's literally a, a a math issue of you know having enough panels, especially if somebody has a conflict or can't look at a case because of timing, and you can't just have three or four board members doing all the cases. And we have to get training on that. And there's a lot of work that has to be done. That we want to do, especially as our staff, you know, you know, uh, starts providing that even to more of a basis than they have already, that we are, have this board fully functional. And also, as we do the work for advocacy for the board in the community and 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 um, within city council, we need to have you know all of our board members here. Uh, so right now we have you know one opening on the alliance. Uh, as of the end of the month, we have two alliance openings, uh, and now we're going to have a city council appointee open for the the south district. That's appointed by council. So that's three board seats uh, that we need to get filled, and I think it'd be optimum if they all were filled at the same time, um, or even I'd love to get one filled tomorrow. But you know that's not going to happen. We got them all filled all within this in the next month or or this month even. We'd have three new board members coming in, go through the trainings together, go through the orientation together, meet the staff together, uh, you know, meet with with our new leadership uh, together, and be able to come in and support us uh, coming in all at the same time. Uh, we are bringing them in individually at different time points or over weeks or over months, as has been. That, that's just not as effective for the work that needs to happen, especially as where we are um, with, with moving quicker and faster uh, with the agency right now. So again, we're really asking council, uh, demanding council, they fill you know these seats. The alliance has already sent names in for the opening that was that, you know for June. They already have notice of of the openings that we have right now. So they, and the alliance will be sending names in if they haven't already for. For, for Danielle C and you know for the appointee seat, I know Matthew reached out to the city council member that that would be uh, appointing that seat or suggesting an appointment to city council that seat um, uh, previous you know, over a week ago, a week a week or two ago to give her a heads up that you know this is a seat that needs to be filled. And encourage the rest of council to fill that. Those are conversations again we've had with council. We'll continue that again now that we've you know announced this publicly. But again, all this work that is going on, what we talked about earlier. Um, there's some things that are in, in council's hands right now that they can decide to do uh, in a quicker time frame, hopefully, to move us to a point where we can uh, have a fully functioning uh, board that uh, has all the seats filled and has everything else that we've talked about earlier um, taken care of and, 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 and voted on and, uh, and agreed to. Anything else for uh, new business? Well, when you mentioned, and first of all, thank both of you for the work, for the oh. friendship, for the encouragement. You all are truly, truly going to be missed physically, but I know that we can call on you at any time and you'll be willing to help us. And we really appreciate that. And Dr. Harvey, you know, what can we do? As individuals, we're doing what we can, but as a church leader and a leader in other organizations, get your members to call council and say, this is what the community needs. That's where the power is. The community has the power to insist that council members move because I do believe elections are coming up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they will be ring not ringing our doorbells, calling us on the phone and wanting our support. And I don't mind, I appreciate it. 
but it's now, it's now time for them to support the community. So have everybody call. And can I emphasize, um, emphasize a point mm -hmm. that um, Chair Knox had made? Tr um, filling the seats, filling the seats at the same time makes it so much easier, mm -hmm. not only as a board, but also as a board member, because you're going through the onboarding process with other individuals. You're not going through that onboarding process by yourself. There's certain um, things that's mentioned in the charter that we have to have training on. So when you bring three people, if you bring three people in at once, all those three people can get that training at once rather than staggering it because you have to have a certain amount of training and training in certain areas as a board member according to the charter. So just just to put that out there so council can think about that when filling those seats, try and fill the seats all at once. That will be very beneficial, not only for the board, but also for those three members that's coming in because you're getting adjusted. And as a member that is resigning, I will say it is, it's a lot to take on at once. So if you can have a board member to call on that's in the same position as you, you know, coming in with you, it's very helpful. Um, myself, I came in by myself, so I had to go through like all of the training and everything alone, which was fine. But at the end of the day, it was like literally me. I was being <laughs> caught up by myself. So um, when board member Brown came on, I remember she came on a time after me, I was able to help her with a lot because I was like, oh, I just went through this. Like, this is what you do. So just be mindful of that bringing three board members at once rather than staggering them is very helpful to the onboarding process and the systems that um, we've created. And I was a part of creating that system. It's really helpful and it was created in a way so it could be efficient and board members can immediately get to work and be caught up with the things that are on hand at that time. So one last word. On that along those lines you know one of the main reasons i'm stepping down is not just because we're in a great position here but like danielle you know i'm a i'm a church planner my church is still a new start and after 10 years we're finally trying to organize as a formal congregation so that it goes from being controlled by the synod to being controlled by the people in the congregation right um five percent of church plants actually end up as organized congregations it's very hard and very rare for something new to survive this agency is still here and I would hate for, our staff don't take it for granted that's why they fight so hard to make sure that their work is able to be done uh former chair Shawnee Wilson didn't take it for granted which is why she drove herself into ground to make sure that this hat was happening you said our former executive director worked really hard to make sure that this place would exist there's people in this room who even though they're no longer a part of the agency are still working hard to make sure it exists like people are working really hard and I just hope that the rest of the community can recognize what a miracle I don't use that word lightly very often. What a miracle this thing is. Like something, the will of the people, something else wants this to survive in spite of all the stuff. And I just think if we keep, if, if we take it for granted, it won't be around because there's not a lot of people who want to as soon as it's not expedient. I bet that if this was the main issue of whether someone was elected in a few weeks or a few months, whenever that is, there would be a very different urgency around it. But I think we should say, is, is, is there a government worth having without a people driven, person-centered organization like this. And I think if it looks strange to the community it's because we aren't trying to do things the way things have always been done because the way things have always been done has necessitated the nest of this board. The way things have been done top down, pay your dues, do all this stuff, follow the system has led to the system we have. We can't dismantle the master's house with the master's tools. We need new tools and we need people to trust that the people of this city who are most affected by these things know what is best for them and are asking for it not to be taken for granted along with this agency. So it's it's a very special thing. It's a rare thing. It does not need to exist. It probably should not exist after all the ups and downs and mistakes we've made. And somehow it's still here because a lot of people have worked their butt off to get here. And so I hope we can keep, uh, I, like Danielle said, I wanna keep working for it and behalf of it with it. Anytime y'all y'all need us, obviously, you know, you just wanna you know have someone to say is the argumentative one so you can all have, you know. But I mean, but I think just don't take it for granted. You know, you know what I mean? Like our staff doesn't, the board doesn't, the people of the city don't. So it's a special thing. Yeah. And just one thing before we move forward. Yes, we're asking, and we would love to have all three people come on at the same time. Be great. 
but I do not want counsel to take that as a license to hold things up. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you all wanted all three people, but we only had one of them. Mm -hmm. you know, no, we're not going for the foot right. Mm -hmm. If they have one, somebody ready, let's go. Go with what we can get because there's too much work to do and it's too important for people to play games. Mm -hmm. One for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. As just a practical um, effect of you know, come to our February meeting, if one of us is sick, nobody else can be sick. We need a quorum and board chair. You know, I'm always making sure we got at least five here, but if we only have six board members, um, you know, and there's work to be done that we have to vote on um, in regards to cases that people are wanting results on or wanting to know why their case isn't going to be heard, uh, we, need to, we shouldn't be fighting about having a quorum. We should be I'm worried about making sure we have, you know, the other decision that we that we're talking about that we want to make. Um, so again, I think, we, I think everybody said it. I really appreciate everybody's time on the board. Yeah, I'm one of the newer members to the board, but really appreciate what you helped build and and we're going to continue it. And definitely, we'll be calling on you um, for your thoughts and ideas and a little bit more you can do when you're not on the board than you can on the board sometimes in regards to advocacy. Mm -hmm. That is definitely true. Which is hopefully, and you guys are. Uh, well, well, well uh, informed on things that other people aren't in the community. So hopefully you'll take that out, out there and, and, and be out there in the ways that you couldn't as a board member. Um, so I really appreciate people who do that for us. All right. Um, anything else in your business before we move to adjourn? Any motion to adjourn? So move. All right, we are done. Thank you, everybody. Don't need a sec. What time for it? I don't know what time to do it.